इस इनिंग्स की शुरुआत म्यूचुअल फंड से कर थोड़े थोड़े पैसे एस के जरिए म्यूचुअल फंड्स में इन्वेस्ट कर सही समय पे ये काम आए अरे फिर से म्यूचुअल फंड्स <laughs> सही है म्यूचुअल फंड निवेश बाजार जोखिमों के अधीन है योजना से जुड़े सभी दस्तावेजों को ध्यान से पढ़ें क्रिकेट एज वी कॉल इज अ फनी गेम एंड द मेजर इंपॉर्टेंट थिंग इज समटाइम्स वी फील एन इंडिविजुअल परफॉर्मेंस कैन विन यू मैचेस बट वी ऑफन टेन टू फर्गेट द टीम परफॉर्मेंसेस कम बिफोर इंडिविजुअल परफॉर्मेंसेस एंड दैट इज व्हाट बांग्लादेश शोड टू अस ऑन द फर्स्ट डे ऑफ द ग्लोबल क्वालिफायर्स हैविंग नॉट प्लेड फॉर 16 17 मंथ्स Bangladesh returned to international cricket this month playing a three match series against Zimbabwe. Nobody gave them that many chances but it was them who beat Pakistan on the opening day of the women's global qualifiers for the T- for the 50 over world cup in New Zealand this year next year. Ananya is here with me. Ananya your first thoughts and on that big massive upset that we saw. Yeah. Uh, well, first of all, a little surprise. I mean, I know uh, Marina Iqbal did say that fifty uh, over cricket is Bangladesh's forte, and they would cause uh, you know issues to Pakistan if they got things right on the day. Um, but you know, just the way that the game progressed, um, especially the way that Bangladesh innings was progressing uh, in the middle overs, it just felt like Pakistan had a grip on it, considering the experience they have in their lineup. um the bowlers at their disposal i just felt like it was probably a bridge too far for bangladesh but the way they came back in those last 10 overs getting 89 runs um you know rumana ahmed just went ballistic i think pakistan probably didn't get their tactics right right towards the end and um yeah it was just a massive win for bangladesh and it feels like at this point um you know considering they carry those points into the super 6 it feels like they've got one foot in that world cup already and you know things would have to go drastically wrong for them to miss out on a berth there so we more or less more or less confirmed for the first spot was joining those five teams in new zealand and bangladesh looks certain to make that particular thing uh, you mentioned that the end did not do well for pakistan but so was the start we already saw 47 49 for five wickets Uh, and and Pakistan look like oh okay are they even going to make a hundred today? Yeah, it did. I mean, uh, you know, if you if you look at the way Pakistan have played ODIs over the last year, year and a half, um, it feels like a very familiar script where the top order collapses and then Nidadar and Ali Arias that hashtag Ali and Daru come together and you know they kind of rescue them um, from that number six seven position and and. um they did that again against against bangladesh i thought credit to bangladesh i think they showed a lot of discipline with the ball at the start um ritu moni especially um bowled like very very good lines i think nigar sultana had a fantastic day behind the stumps converted some really tough catches um but yeah again for pakistan it's that uh, nidadar and and ali arias combination they caught them over the line um both of them i thought played really well i think you know when you look at the way they accelerated towards the end you begin to think maybe could they have gone a little earlier could they have pushed that score to 210 220 considering the firepower that they do have um you know with Fatima Sana later on we've seen Diana Beg also with the ability to clear the field so could they have gone slightly earlier um but you know credit to them the way they batted and got Pakistan to a total that you know they possibly could have defended they should have defended in hindsight but um Yeah, the beginning and the end were probably horror stories for Pakistan. Let's let's come down to um, a bit of whatever was positive for Pakistan. We saw five wickets down, but then we saw Nida Dar and Ali Arish just that brilliant partnership to take them to where they are. They were yesterday. Your first thoughts because you're a big fan of both of them, uh, and but you didn't mention Ali Arish in the preview. that we had two days back um look uh, for me alia riaz is going to be an honorable mention i did want to stick to bowlers um because marina had picked uh, three batters so uh, alia riaz was meant to be a, a honorable mention but again i didn't maybe want to drink so maybe that was at the back of my head but 
Look, uh, I think both of them played extremely well. They soaked in the pressure. Um, they gave Bangladesh, um, you know, those overs when they were doing well. And I thought they settled in nicely and accelerated extremely well towards the back end, uh, like I said. And, you know, just the way, I think, the fact that they cleared the boundary with ease, each of them hit uh, a couple of sixes. Um, just the way they played those last five to seven overs, it, it got me thinking maybe they could have gone a little earlier because... 220 may have been a little a bridge too far for Bangladesh. I think 200, 205, they would have been happy with, but maybe 220 may have been a bridge too far, considering the way Pakistan held things up in those middle overs when they bowled. So, um, yeah, both of them have been positives for Pakistan for a while now. We saw in South Africa as well, them come in and, and score runs there as well. So, I think Pakistan really need to, to find someone in the top order to be more consistent. We saw Muniba Ali in the runs against West Indies. She needs to really step up, um, you know, in the in the rest of the games now. That was what Pakistan did well when it comes to batting. Bangladesh, overall, the performance looked to be a more team performance. Uh, each and everyone chipped in. I understand that Rumana Ahmed was the one uh, who actually closed down on that brilliant uh, 50. Uh, your first thoughts on Rumana Ahmed? Um, look, uh, the way she kind of came in and uh, she took a little while to start uh, to, you know, kick off her innings um, was a little slow to start. But I think, you know, the way she accelerated in the middle towards the end, it reminded me a lot of the way she took control of the chase in that Asia Cup against India in 2018 when Bangladesh um, chased down 120. She'd done that when they chased down 140 in the group game in that same tournament. And it just reminded me of of how she... Um, has this innate ability to take control of chases. She understands exactly what she needs to do. Um, I remember back in 2016 when I interviewed her during the T20 World Cup. Um, at the time, she was Bangladesh's premier leg spinner and her batting wasn't quite at the forefront, but she kept talking about how good a batter she is. She refused to talk about her bowling and everything was about, I am a good batter, I can bat up the order. And now when you see the returns, you see exactly what she was talking about. Um, She's got it. She seems to have a really good cricket brain, understands where she can find her boundaries. And, you know, the way she took down Omema Sohail uh, at the back end in the 48th over was just credit to her. She, she picked the bowler, she picked her areas and, and she got Bangladesh over the line. So basically, uh, just to give context to people, Rumana Ahmed uh, is the person was the ODI captain for Bangladesh just a while back because Sultana Jyoti, this is her first tournament. Uh, she didn't play against Zimbabwe. So, this is her first tournament as a full-time captain of the Bangladesh ODI team. Uh, but Ananya, it looked more of a team performance. Fargana Haq did well. Salma Khatun did well. Ritu Muni did well. Um, uh, how, how important this team performances are important so that they can outscore individual or two people's performances? Well, it's always, you know, people coming together that's always going to get you over the line. It's very rare that uh, one big performance from an individual is going to see you um, over the line. So I think that partnership up top between uh, Sharmin Akhtar and Fargana Haq, uh, I think it was an 80-run stand. Um, I think that really set the platform for Bangladesh. I think at that point, Pakistan, I'm sure, would have been worried about you know, how do we break this partnership? Where do we go from here? Because I think at that point, uh, Bangladesh was somewhat in cruise control. Um, and, and it was after they broke that partnership that they maybe would have felt a sense of control over the game where they were able to squeeze a little uh, in the, those middle overs. And then when uh, I think Rumana Ahmed and Ritu Moni came together, I think Ritu Moni also played a, a really important hand there, 33 yard. Um, and that partnership towards the back end, when you think of Bangladesh needing, I think they needed close to 90 runs in the last 10 overs. Um, that was the partnership that really gave them hope. Um, but again, I feel like Pakistan just got some of their tactics really wrong um, towards the back end and, and let the game slip. So um, worrying signs for them, but it's great that Bangladesh were able to hold their nerve um, in a game like this and, and get, come out on top. So, no Bisma Maru for Pakistan. A lot of pressure on Javeria Khan uh, to get her side qualify for that 50-over uh, World Cup in New Zealand. If you've chosen Rumana Ahmed in your team yesterday and probably made her the captain, you would have won double the fantasy points on Fantasy Akada. Go download the app and play as many games as possible. Tomorrow, there are four games at in Zimbabwe. 
for the global qualifiers. And then let's move on to game two that happened yesterday. Um, the less profiled one, uh, Thailand versus Zimbabwe. This was Thailand's first ODI match and they beat Zimbabwe. Not comfortably, but yeah, again, thrillers are thrillers in a cricket match. Yeah, again, uh, I said this in the preview as well. I feel like um, Thailand, having come to Zimbabwe previously, played against them uh, T20s and one-day games. I'm sure they would have gone back to the drawing board with, and and you know put together some really good strategies for these for the batters for the bowlers. Um, like I mentioned, Harshal Pathak is someone who watches rewatches videos. Um, you know, looks intently at at fields that bowlers are setting, figures out how his batters can um, score runs uh, against those fields. So. Um, they they they've clearly gone and and really worked on their batting, especially in that middle order. Um, and it was interesting for me to see someone like Sornarin Tipok, who generally bats at that five six position, come up and and do well. Um, but you you can see that there are tactical understanding where Nataya Butchatam got out. He sent in another left hander. So um, you know Thailand for me are always going to be the dark horses in that group. I feel like um, you know if they could cause an upset. Um, they will, after this, I feel like they'll be disappointed if they don't get into that top five and make their way into the ODI Championship. That will be something that's certainly on their radar, whether they get to the World Cup or not is, a, you know, that's that's a question in itself. But I think it was great to just see them come out and, and really play um, good one-day cricket because we spoke in the preview about how these teams, it may be difficult for them to, to adapt to the format considering they've played a lot of T20 cricket. So it was great to see them last those 100 overs and also play them um, really, really well. Uh, the top three, uh, if they want to qualify for the World Cup um, next year, they will have to beat Pakistan tomorrow, which will be another massive, massive, massive upset. Um, in case that happens, but cricket, as we know, it can definitely turn tables on its head. Arshal Patak is a shoot tactician, knows, understands the game very well. May well see Thailand do what uh, a lot of people cannot even believe of them doing. If we see that entire scorecard yesterday, Chantam 48, Tipok 40 at number 3, which was important. Nana Part 47, Shaiwai 30, Chattiru, uh, Sunir, uh, Sunir, Chanida Suttiru won 35 of 28. So it looked like a very complete team performance, as we like to call it. And then we saw the pooling. Again, one wicket for Buchitam, one for uh, Onicha, two for Leomi. So yeah, again, a very team performance. Uh, but Zimbabwe did not uh, play badly. They, 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 they scored 239 for five, just lost by eight runs. Um, that's that's more or less very important uh, in in a competition like this where net run rates can play a part. That's true, and I think for Zimbabwe, when you look at that scorecard, it was the senior players who stood up. Think of Marian Musanda, uh, Shani Myers coming back into the side, uh, Josephine Nakomo as well. So they, it was the senior players who stood up and and really challenged Thailand. I think. Um, at the halfway mark, when I looked at the at the scorecard, I know Zimbabwe have chased down 250 against Thailand and and all that, but it just felt like with the bowling side that Thailand have and the fielding side Thailand have, it would have been a bit too much for Zimbabwe. But the fact that they stayed in the game for as long as they did, Musonda took them very very close and unbeaten 69. Um, it was again, it was those senior players who stood up, and it's great for Zimbabwe that they got at that close. Um, you know, whether how much of a, a, a part net run rate will play in this group, I'm not sure. But uh, especially after that, uh, especially after Bangladesh have beaten Zimbabwe, you know, how much will net run rate play a part? I'm not sure. But it, it's great for them to, to come back after what would have been a very difficult series against Bangladesh where the batters really struggled. Um, it was wonderful to see them come back and, and get some runs on the board. So it'll definitely give them a lot of confidence going forward. So, did you see Marion Musonda actually winning it for uh, Zimbabwe with the kind of batting she was doing and that that little less margin that we had? <laughs> um, honestly, uh, not really. But again, when uh, I was, you know, I wasn't wasn't quite sure because again, this is a difficult situation for Thailand situation where they haven't been in uh, in fifty over cricket. So. Um, for them, again, the back end, it was an experienced player, Nataya Bhutatam, coming in and kind of closing it out for them. So, uh, 
at the at the i mean i think after marange got out for me i felt like it was probably a bit too much for zimbabwe to do um so yeah i i was back in thailand by the way thailand was someone uh, ananya was backing all the way but there was one player who stood out uh, janita shutirwan played 35 uh, scored 35 just 28 balls was the player of the match um so yeah uh, is she going to be your differentiating factor for thailand when she plays any other team maybe um she has i mean her batting has come a long way since that t20 world cup um during that period again they were working a lot with her on her on her batting and you know expanding her scoring area so for her to come in and and play like that she has played quite a few knocks like that over the last year or so whenever thailand have have come in and and um you know played any cricket so she's getting used to that role um and i guess at that position she is playing at a, at the pace that is required so um you know maybe when thailand are under pressure in a chase um she will be the differentiating factor she will be the one who will you know be able to get them closer to a target but uh, you know I, i i'm more keen to see how she goes against i suppose the more established teams like pakistan and bangladesh uh but a bit concerning that she again bowled just one over uh the first over and that's it look we we really don't know what the thing is i i do know that she was carrying a knee injury for a while i don't know how that how she's tracking with that um but thailand have a group of some really really good spinners so um on tracks like um that are um in zimbabwe you'd think that they're going to back their spin because that's what they've done all all this while so um whether it's a knee issue or whether it's just a rhythm thing with chanida we don't know so two more th- that was it from yesterday's two matches bangladesh caught an upset against pakistan thailand beat zimbabwe in their first ever odi uh, tomorrow we have four matches coming up the, the third match of the tournament ireland versus west indies from group a group a begins there the uh, thing netherlands play sri lanka from group b we have two matches pakistan playing thailand and then bangladesh locking horns with the united states of america and then yeah a bit of a difficult question here which is going to be the most competitive match out of the four that we have to move oh god look i'm hoping that it will be ireland west indies um because i i think like i i think ireland are a squad that have have come a long way in the last while um so i'm hoping that they'll you know push west indies maybe not beat them because um i mean they'll have to have a brilliant day to beat them um but i'm hoping they push west indies so i'm hoping that's going to be the biggest or the most closely contested game but i think something that will probably come close to that um is pakistan thailand one because pakistan are coming off a loss um they really have they have to win to to keep their hopes alive in the tournament and also thailand coming off a win they and remember they also you know scored 150 against pakistan in the t20 world cup so you know can they reopen some wounds against them um with uh, buchatam and chantam at the top um that's going to be something that that will definitely be interesting to see but i'm hoping ireland and west indies is is uh, very competitive I I lead versus West Indies is going to be more competitive but Ananya feels that Pakistan Thailand can also spring a surprise the kind of thing what they did in the last international match that they played a rained out one in Sydney last year so stay tuned with us where in we review and preview the entire tournament um on mutual fund sahi hai the outside view powered by fantasy akhada डायरेक्ट प्लान म्यूचुअल फंड में खुद से इन्वेस्ट करने का एक ऑप्शन है इससे कमीशन बच जाता है अरे यार जस्सी मुझे ही बताना डायरेक्ट प्लान में सोच समझ कर इन्वेस्ट कर तो ही फायदा है सही है तेरी इतना भारी म्यूचुअल फंड निवेश बाजार जोखिमों के अधीन है योजना से जुड़े सभी दस्तावेजों को ध्यान से पढ़ें